Hello everyone and welcome to our part four about vSphere with Tanzu and NSXT. And this part is going to be about the embedded harbor image registry. So enabling the embedded harbor registry on vSphere with Tanzu is super easy. Uh, for, to do that, you just go under your cluster view to image registry. There will be a button enable after which you select the storage to be used and then click OK. And then a number of actions will take place to create a namespace and deploy a number of pods for the Harbor Embedded Registry. So I have it running right now. Um, and you can also find uh, the Tenzu storage being tagged for Tenzu, uh, which is just my plain NFS storage. And you can see the, the storage being used but then more importantly, the link to your Harbor UI from which you can consume or watch or manage the embedded registry. So Harbor consists of a number of pods, as you can see here, in a dedicated namespace. And if you don't have to worry about them, they will be installed and configured automatically. And more importantly, NSXT will also be configured automatically to support Harbor in its dedicated namespace, and also to be able to provision a load balancer instance for the Harbor UI so you can interact with all the pods on the NSXT segments being created in NSXT. So before jumping to, towards NSXT and to see how things are configured there, for, let's first start testing that UI URL to see if it works and if I'm able to log in. Um, so your URL works, um, I've created a namespace. So when you create a namespace, you will also see uh, for that namespace to, that, that uh, there will be a Harbor project being configured automatically in the registry. So I've created an alpha namespace, which also has um, a user attached to it. That's just a vSphere.local user called alpha. And I've attached the storage policy Tenzu to it. There's nothing running here yet. Um, this video is just showing how Harbor works. And I will show a simple example for uh, pushing an image to the embedded registry. In another video, we'll actually deploy pods using a deployment uh, and, and using the image from Harbor. So let's go back to the UI for Harbor. So let's check if I can log in. That works. So you can see it has projects configured for that user called Alpha, automatically, automatically created when I created a namespace. And in here, you can see a number of repositories. So I already uploaded or pushed one image called Ubuntu for test purposes. So I can see there's a repository for that image being created already. So this seems to work so far fine. Let's check in N60 how things are being configured. So when you enable Harbor, you would see namespace being created for the registry and you can find related objects in NSXT if you search on registry. So there are two namespaces being created. First of all, a, a sort of system namespace for the Harbor registry, which just consists of a single controller manager pod. And then the namespace consisting of the actual Harbor application, which consists of seven pods at the moment, and basically a database, Nginx, Redis, and so forth. You can find associated IP addresses, segments, segment ports for those pods and the labels. More interest interestingly, they also have community services attached. Those will be distributed load balancing services, which are basically service of type cluster IP, but also one small load balancer instance with a server pool associated with it to provision that um, uh, UI web page uh, towards end users to be able to use it. So when I click on the server pool, I can find the details of the small load banners instance and the server pool. 
and I can find the members of the pool, which is just one Nginx pod in this case. It's associated IP address for that pod and the virtual server being associated. And this is again the, the, the ingress IP being allocated to Harbor. So this is the dot three ingress IP listening on 443 as a layer four load balancer. So if you look at netting, we would see for sure a dedicated tier one gateway being configured for the Harbor registry. And I can find associated net rules. And like similarly, like I've shown before on other items for creating a namespace, you would see default no net and net rules being configured for the Harbor image registry. So the first two rules make sure that there's no netting being involved if we're doing pod to pod traffic or pod to ingress traffic. And finally, there is a source net rule for any traffic um, going out which translates to an egress IP, the dot three in this case. Um, similarly, we have a dedicated tier one as each namespace gets a dedicated tier one. It's related segment configured here. And you can find the segment related to the Harbor image registry namespace as well. Finally, just to show that there's also something being configured on the distributed firewall, you will find a number of policies for the registry to ensure that there is pot to pot traffic being allowed here and here, but also isolation rules that there's an, if there's no match in the source uh, for any allow rules that we isolate that traffic and drop that traffic to secure that. So, Let's move on to working with images. So I've already downloaded, pulled an image from the Docker registry uh, and from the Google registry. And in this case, it's Kubernetes up and running image. And to use it in the Harbor registry, I've, I need to tag it. So I did tag Docker tag. And I made sure that I'm tagging it as following to the IP address of my hardware image registry for my alpha namespace. And I'm tagging it as Kubernetes up and running latest. And using this tag, I can find that tag in my Docker images shown here. So as a repository, so now I can push that image towards my hardware image registry. So do a push. I've done this before for test purposes. So it finds layer already being existing and it will push this image to Harbor. So let's check that. So in Harbor, I would expect a new project uh, with, uh, sorry, uh, the, in the alpha project, I would expect a new repository as you can see here. And clicking on that repository, I can find the latest tag and I can also find a pull command. And this is important to understand if you are going to pull images from uh, the Harbor image registry. And in, an, in an, another example, I'm going to show how to create vSphere pods uh, using a deployment. And I will reference this uh, command as well to show you what you need to do in the, uh, in the manifest to, to make sure that it's using the Harbor registry to pull that image. So this concludes our demo, our part four, about um, the Harbor Embedded Image Registry with Fis here with Tanzu on NS60. I hope you learned a lot and liked it. Looking forward to your feedback. If there are any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching and see you next time.